not really a slide, but uh, hello there. <laughs> I have acquired a thing. Let me show you what it is. This bad boy. <laughs> this has been requested for a hot second and it's, it's been a minute since we've looked at a, a true espresso machine. We have looked at things that make espresso, but this is arguably an espresso machine. Smeg has been around for a while. They've been around since like the late 1940s and they make a whole variety of home appliances. And what's really unique about them is they're very distinct design. They're very rounded. I hesitate to use the word bulbous, but that is the word that frequently comes to mind when I see their designs. But that being said, among their kitchen appliances, they also have a variety of coffee machines. And as I have right here, an espresso machine. Off the bat, I will tell you, I'm not at all affiliated with Smeg. I have acquired this on my own and it came with a pretty price tag. And, and the question often is, does the machine live up to that price tag? So I would like to know that. I assume you would like to know that. So let's just dig into this. I think I have adequately unearthed it. Let's talk about what I found inside. Now, of course, the boring things that we have, we have an instruction manual along with a warranty, so fun stuff. Next up, you have your portafilter and you have a couple different baskets you can use with it. You have one that you can use a paper, like espresso, ground espresso capsule with. You have a basket if you're just pulling a single shot of espresso, and then you have a basket if you're pulling a double shot of espresso, which is a nice variety. Now, the portafilter itself, this is stainless steel, but you also have a plastic handle on here. This is not grippy or rubber. This is just hard plastic. And for the most part, it feels pretty sturdy, which is nice. We have this thing right here, and this is where I start to narrow my eyes just a little bit because it's a dual purpose tool. It is entirely made out of hard plastic. And while one end is a scoop, that's very clear to see, the other end, in fact, is gonna act as a tamp for your portafilter. Let me show you a regular tamp. Let me show you why I don't love the use of this. First off, very, very different materials between these two. This is a very, very heavy weighted tamp. Uh, it also has a very different top surface so that when you are, of course, tamping down your espresso, you're able to kind of get some leverage over top. Generally, you will tamp like this. You're able to press down with a good amount of pressure and get everything evenly packed in. With something like this that is just hard plastic, you don't really have any leverage unless you wanted to grip the scoop <laughs> and drop it. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, unless you wanted to kind of get overhead and grip the scoop, you're gonna have a very difficult time applying pressure. That also, if you're pressing down too hard, you start to get get bend here, which means you're gonna have like an uneven bed if more of the pressure is applied to one side of the puck versus the other. So don't love this, but it's what we have, it's what's included, so we will use it, dang it. Also, quick question in the comments. Do you say tamp? or tamper. I've heard both and I'm very curious what you would call something like this. So let me know down below. That is everything that is detachable and comes loose with the espresso machine. Now we have the, uh, the main star of the show. But before we jump into that, I do want to give a humongous thank you to the partner for today's video. I want to give a huge thank you to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. Now Vessi recently released their everyday move shoe and it's fast becoming my go-to. Vessi's have always been some of my favorite shoes to wear anywhere from work to my everyday, but this shoe is especially great with added support and a sportier look. And since I live in Oregon, which is, if you haven't heard, quite the rainy state in the winter, I have to talk about one of my all-time favorite features of the shoe, which is that these Vessies are 100% waterproof and made from a lightweight Dymatex knit material, meaning that when mistakes, puddles, or even spills happen, my feet stay dry. This makes them both the perfect barista shoe and the perfect everyday rainy weather shoe. And their herringbone tread pattern helps them be grippy and safe even when I'm slipping around the cafe. So if you want to match with me and get your own pair of Vessies, I got you because Vessi is giving my subscribers $25 off your purchase when you click the link below and enter code MDC. That's code MDC after you click the link in the description. And thank you again to Vessi for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back. This bad boy right here clocks in at right around $515, give or take a couple cents, depending on where you buy it from. For that cost, I would consider this a little bit more of a mid-range espresso machine. Now, that sounds like a lot of money for only being mid-range, but for the most part, espresso machines are going to be expensive. That's something that's really hard to get over, and it's why there are so many much cheaper substitutes to making espresso at home than buying one of these. But for $500, I'm expecting this to pull good espresso. I'm expecting this to steam good milk. I'm also expecting it to have a, a pretty solid build to it. I'd like it to be consistent. I'd also like to have some control over my shots because this is a, for the most part, a manual machine. Like you can stop and control your shots even though you can also program them. It's kind of bridging that gap between just pressing a button to brew your coffee and also having complete control like one might with something like this, the Ranchilio that I have in the background. Now putting my hands on this, this feels creepy. <laughs> there are a couple things I don't love because while some of these build components are stainless steel, this entire thing is covered in a hard 
plastic coating, which just makes it feel a lot cheaper than it is for over $500. I would expect it to feel a little bit more luxurious, but that being said, it does lend it to being a very, very light machine. This is, this is an espresso machine and this is very, <laughs> very, here comes the airplane vibes, but this is a, this is a pretty light in weight machine. All right, well, we have the front and it's pretty simple. To turn it here, we have a couple different buttons. We have a button if you're pulling a single shot. We have a button if you are pulling a double shot. You have a steam button and you also have this little, um, so many moving pieces. Oh my word. You also have this uh, knob over here. This is gonna be for your, your steam wand. Uh, kind of interesting. <laughs> interesting shape, I will say. Other moving pieces are gonna be down here. You have a drip tray that is pretty much fully removable so you can clean it when it gets full. Now on this side of the machine, you have a power button. That's kind of the only exceptional thing here. <laughs> and then onto the back. Then of course, moving to the back, once you remove the, uh, the little hat that comes with it, you have your water tank. This holds about one liter. Now, I will also mention, you can see these kind of like ports inside. These are meant for water softener filters. These do not come with the machine. These are a separate accessory that you will have to purchase online. They're very tricky to find. This might just be a regional thing, but I was having a very difficult time finding them at any sort of smeg like authorized reseller stores or even online. So there is that. And I would consider that a downside because I would like to have my, my water filtered in my espresso machine, especially for $500. Now I've got my pitcher out because before we plug this in, get it clean, they get started using it. I do want to mention the one other very major component of an espresso machine, which is going to be in fact the steam wand. Now off the bat, when I saw this for the first time, the steam wand was the first thing my attention was drawn to because that, that that's half the fun of making coffee. I feel like if you are someone who makes any sort of lattes or cappuccinos or wants foam to milk for steamers, question mark, your steam wand's going to be pretty important. I gotta say, I do not love the shape of this steam wand. When you're steaming milk, you'll want to pull your steam wand out away from the machine a little bit and you'll want to insert it into your pitcher. Now this is this is a small pitcher by, by most standards. Some pitchers are a lot taller and some are a lot wider as well, but I've pulled out a small one just so I can kind of demonstrate the issues that I see even with something of this size. When you steam milk, as I'm sure most of you know, you want to insert the steam wand into the pitcher. You want to find a nice angle so you can insert air and then you want to insert the steam wand even deeper into your milk once you're done aerating your milk. That way you can spread that air throughout the entirety of your milk. You're able to get like a nice swirl, like all that stuff that we want for nice creamy milk. With something like this, with the steam wand being so incredibly short, when you insert the pitcher into it, already I am, I am touching I'm touching the machine. Like it, it's very hard to get it any deeper in without kind of like scratching anything, which makes it very tricky to imagine that when we're actually steaming it, I'll be able to aerate and then, you know, do anything else. Like this is just, this is very difficult to work with. And I'll give you a few more close ups when we get a little bit further into the progress, but this steam wand already is a huge downside for me. That being said, that's the exterior of this Meg. So I'm gonna run a couple cleaning cycles on this to get it all prepped for us. And then I will meet you back here in a moment to make some espresso. All right, well, I have now had a whole load of fun uh, <laughs> running water through this. So I think it's time to run some coffee through it. All right, I have some nice, very finely ground coffee in here. This is ground for espresso like I would use in any other machine. I'm also using our double shot basket and the portafilter. One could also use the single shot filter that is included if you like. I find double shots to be more practical <laughs> in my day-to-day my -day coffee drinking. So this is what we're going with. Scoop time, unfortunately. Let's see what makes the most sense to put in here. This is a smaller basket that kind of has a max capacity of about 16 grams-ish. So I'm gonna kind of go in the middle. I'm gonna put 15 grams of ground coffee in and then evenly distribute as best as possible while actively spilling on the counter. And then to tamp. I'm gonna do it a little differently than I normally would just because this tamp is not ideal in the slightest. And I kind of just apply a little bit lighter pressure and then I'm actually gonna use my pointer finger and my thumb to press down evenly in kind of a square pattern. Our coffee is now tightly packed in there. Um, it looks very clean. There doesn't appear to be any sort of like breakage or cracks along the top of the puck. So <laughs> I think this is a thumbs up moment. Now I am looking through the manual briefly because these two settings, the single shot and the double shot are pre-programmed with the amount of water they're dispensing. This does have the option to customize the amount of water. So if you wanna go in and really dial in a coffee, you can run through and you can reprogram these buttons essentially. But I was looking to see what the automatic like machine like factory settings were and it doesn't appear to tell me. So I'm going to weigh out the amount of water to figure out what yield we have at the end of this. Here goes nothing. Locked in. Cup fits nicely under our two 
spouts, and I will press the double shot. Okay, you're done. Well, that was strange, and I can't seem to figure out why what just happened did. So let's just start over again, perhaps. Maybe we're both just off our game a little bit today because I'm, I'm not sure if I want to drink that. I think we can do better. <laughs> All right, one. Once more, 15 grams. Insert into machine. Our lights are not flashing, so that should be fully preheated. Tear out the cup. Underneath, all lined up and Well, at least this time we have acquired a shot of about 40 grams. I need to pull it a little bit tighter. I realize that having 15 grams in and then 40 grams out is, is a, that's a huge shot. That's, that's massive. It should be a little bit smaller, I think, but let's at least taste what we have here. There is presence of some crema on top. This just looks like a bit of a weak shot. So some dialing we will do. Not pleasant. All right, back we are with some coffee that is ground a little bit coarser. Insert. A Little bit shorter. We're hitting about 35 grams here, which is a little bit more reasonable. That is still, still a bigger shot for having only 15 grams of coffee in, but let's see how we're doing. Temperature wise, very good. The body of this shot is still pretty watery. I'm gonna pull one more shot. I'm gonna decrease my dose a little bit, but I'm going to stay with the same grind size. I'm just not seeing what I wanna see from this espresso machine so far. So for this round, I'm gonna go significantly less. I'm gonna put about 13 grams in. So that's 13 grams in at a grind that is slightly more coarse than a traditional espresso grind. Oh, <gasps> that's what I'm looking for, yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right, already that shot looked significantly better. So folks, dialing in is important. Let's see what we have here. Still a very big shot. This is still sitting at about 35 grams out, which with 13 grams in that is hefty. Usually a one to two ratio of, you know, like one in and then two out is a, is a pretty standard rule of thumb when dialing in espresso. So this is a large shot to be sure, but we had some nice looking crema on top. It wasn't broken at all. And the flow just looked quite a bit better on this. A much better tasting shot. <laughs> all around, that is a lot nicer. So what I would say is if you are dialing in with an espresso machine like this, go lighter on your dose. Go, go a good deal lighter. Well, now that we've got some sort of espresso dialed in, I think it is time to make a milk drink. Now to do this, there is an order of operations because this is a single boiler machine, meaning that one cannot pull an espresso shot alongside steaming. You're able to do one or the other and you have to wait for everything to kind of reset before you can follow up with the next step. For this price, I would not expect this to be a dual boiler. That is traditionally found in espresso machines that are like 800 plus. So having a single boiler at 500 is very normal and that's not necessarily a downside. However, the one thing we will have to note is that we will have to pull our shot first, then we will pause, <laughs> wait for the machine to be ready for us again, and then we will steam our milk. So there will be some time in between those two steps. And I am not having this debate here and now today. This is a very separate video, but do not worry. Your espresso shot will not die. Your espresso shot will be fine in the amount of time that we are steaming our milk. Just want to get that out of the way. <laughs> it's an interesting myth that has a very interesting origin. I will talk about it sometime. That sometime is not right now. I'm going to give you a little bit of a closer look while we do this. So as we did before, I'm going to add about 13 grams of our coffee in. Once more, we tamp with the, uh, the silly tamp. And now it's time to pull some espresso. There is our double shot of espresso. Now we need to let this kind of reset, reheat, and then it'll be time to steam some stuff. And I've got a nice little pitcher of full fat milk. So we're giving ourselves the best chances to make something that is the best tasting. Hello, this is a little cameo from the second angle you're gonna get because I really want you to see what's gonna happen inside the pitcher once we start steaming because that's really where you can see how much control you have and how well the steam wand works. There are a couple things we need to do before we start steaming though. The first is gonna be open up our steam wand and make sure we get any of that leftover milk or water that might be stuck up in there from previous times you have steamed milk. Rules from the book say press your steam button on the front 
and then wait for it to stop flashing. This will mean it is preheated and ready to go. Okay, I'm looking at the front, it is no longer flashing. So I'm using this as kind of a, a catch all for any water that comes out. And then I'm gonna use the little knob here and turn it to the open position. That was quick. A little bit of water came out and then it started steaming. So that's what we want to do. You can just set this to the side because there is no use for it. <laughs> now I'm going to insert my steam wand a little bit under the surface of the milk. We're gonna turn it on. We're gonna see what happens. I have thoughts. I've introduced as much air as I want to. So I'm gonna attempt to get like a, a swirl going on. My milk is also warming up, so I have to be very conscious that I get my air incorporated pretty quickly because I don't want to scald the milk. No swirl is really possible here. All right, well, that's my optimal milk temperature, so I have to stop steaming no matter what. I've got some complaints. <laughs> Let me uh, just get a hold of this. First things first, when we look at our milk texture, you can see that there are a lot, a lot of visible bubbles on top. When I get a spoon, start spooning through it, you can see that this top layer is all just a very, very, very thick foam. And then when we pour it, give me one second, when we pour it, you can see even more the bubbles that have formed on top. Once more, let me draw through. It is just a super thick, kind of like nasty foam on top that is not very well aerated. And then underneath it is just, it's just hot milk underneath there. Also, this drink has been poured for about 30 seconds at this point. It is very close to being like fully dissipated. This is not well-structured milk in the slightest. Now one is able to disassemble the steam wand a little bit for cleaning, so I'm gonna pull this piece off and you're left with this little rubber end here, which is where the steam and the water is coming out of. Now, this is only one point. The water is essentially just shooting out of here and then into your milk. And when you have a cover that is this large, it really like isolates the direction that your steam can spray. Compare that to a more traditional steam wand that you would see on a slightly higher grade machine or even, you know, something from a different brand, which is gonna have several holes around the tip of the steam wand. Those holes will allow for more even dispersion of the steam, it'll also allow you to have more fine control over how your milk is acting and moving. So when we talk about spinning your milk, you're looking to get like a whirlpool effect and to be able to have enough control of your steam direction to get that whirlpool effect, you'll want to have several different spots that your steam is leaving the steam wand. God, I hope that made sense. That was quite a long sentence. That being said, having an omnidirectional <laughs> steam wand, if you will, like this, uh, does not lend itself to fine control over milk texture. Now, I like to think I am fairly qualified qualified in the milk steaming realm, so I can work with the tools I'm given. However, something like this is kind of just like, that's it. There's not too much I can do to change it. So I will steam one more thing of milk just to see if I can really get any sort of control, but I'm doubtful. Quite an explosive experience. It's so impossible to get any sort of angle on this. Like I am, I am trying my darndest either by rotating my pitcher. And unfortunately, because this has such a low range of motion, I can't really adjust the steam wand at any angle. So really all I can do is let, you know, air build up at the top while the rest of my milk underneath just heats up. What I'm left with is milk that is very, very separated. You have a very thick, non like incorporated foam left on top with lots and lots of visible bubbles that also disintegrates very, very quickly. Then underneath you just have hot milk. So you have two radically different textures, which is not at all what we're looking for when we're looking for like very high quality steamed milk. You want your milk to be one just homogenous texture all the way through. It does make me a little sad that this doesn't work nearly as well as it should. So I suppose it's time for my final thoughts about this machine. And I wanna start out with saying that I like being positive on this channel. I, I don't like being negative at all. I like talking about products that I like. I like talking about products that I use and I like sharing stuff that I like with you because I think coffee is very fluid. Nope, <laughs> no pun intended. It should be enjoyed the way you want to enjoy it. I think there are many, many different tools that fit many people's different needs. That being said, I think there are some tools that are less than stellar out there. And that is unfortunately where I think I would put this machine. I think it starts out having a lot of flair. Like this is, this is a very interesting design. It doesn't look like that many traditional espresso machines. It's very retro. It comes in like all sorts of fun, cool colors. But that being said, that doesn't make up for the build and the practicality of it being not 
great. I would say there are a lot of parts of this machine that feel very cheap. They feel not completely thought through. Even down to this tamp, not being completely there, being very bendable, even down to water filters and water softeners not being included in the build, even though they're very clearly meant to be added back here. And that's not even getting into having a steam one that is first of all, very hard to control. And second of all, not built for fine cappuccino or latte or milk control. With the price tag of this machine being over $500. I want a lot more than just a pretty looking machine. I want something that pulls really great espresso. I want something that is intuitive and I want something that steams really great milk because that is that is half of the machine. Like you are doing two features here. You have your espresso and you have your milk steaming. And if only one half of that performs, I don't know. That just, it doesn't really, that doesn't jive for me. And I don't think it'll work for a lot of people, even people who are more espresso forward in how they use their machines. So while I wish I could give this a stellar review, I don't think I can. Unfortunately, I think this machine could be right for some person. And if you are that person, I would love to know why this machine works for you. I'm very, very curious because I don't see a lot of pluses about it, but I'm always welcome to being proven wrong. <laughs> I like to learn from my mistakes. And if you have had stellar experiences with this, I'd like to hear it because if I can figure out how to utilize this correctly, I am more than happy to. But that being said, this has been my review <laughs> and my trial of this Meg Espresso machine. I think it's interesting to look at. I think it's kind of pretty, but I don't think I would ever choose to use it. I hope that was fun and educational and something for some of you. <laughs> and I will see you next time. I unfortunately don't have a drink to walk away with this time because I have not made an acceptable drink. So I will just unplug this. Perhaps I will just walk away with the entire machine. I am Morgan Drinks Coffee on all the platforms that I'm active on. I'm here on YouTube once a week. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram where I post almost every single day. So you can find all the links of fun things down in the description below. If you would like to take a closer look at this machine, I will link it down below. But again, I don't have any affiliation with Smeg. I will see you next time. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>